Hello, what's up? I'm Yazalea from PowerRatedCinematics.com and today I will be talking about how to create some really cool sky replacement in Adobe After Effects the advanced way. So recently I made a sky removal or sky replacement tutorial in Premiere Pro and uh, it was actually pretty popular, a lot of people liked it a lot, but some people were wondering what happens if your shot is moving, what happens if you have a character in front of your camera, and just, yeah, in general, a harder shot to uh, sky remove or sky replace. And although that's not really possible in Premiere, because Premiere isn't really a visual effects software or it isn't made or built to, to do these kind of things, but you can do them slightly. Uh, if you want to go more advanced, you are obligated to opt for After Effects or any other compositing software. So let's have a look on how to do that in After Effects. It's also pretty simple. You only have to know how. So yeah, let's open up After Effects and get started. Alright, here we are in Adobe After Effects and I have some footage here. If I will drag this into a new composition, by the way, you can download the exact same footage with the link in the description so you can follow along with the same kind of footage. I will set my resolution here to full and I will click here to fit it up to 100% and there we go we have it fitted in our window. So I have this kind of shot here I won't be doing it completely but like right here we have the sky I'm, I'm in front of the camera talking to the camera and then right here we actually do a pan up so we have some movement in our shot. So what I will do is actually I'll trim my footage right here and I'll trim the comp to work area um, if I can do it with this kind of timeline or t this kind of time code, uh, obviously you can do it for longer shots, it's just going to take a little bit longer. So the first thing that I want to do is actually track my shot. I want to be able to uh, read the, the positions of all the um, yeah, environment in there. So the first thing that you should do if you're going to track a shot like this is to remove everything that is actually flexible, everything that's moving. So in this case that's me I'm moving in this shot so I have to mask myself out so uh, the tracker doesn't get confused while tracking this shot um, because of me moving around in the shot so what I will do is go to my pen tool go to the beginning of my timeline zoom out just slightly and just start like creating a mask around myself this can be very rough as you can see and I'll do that very quick I'll uh, speed through this process and actually um, before you start masking press M on the keyboard click on the stopwatch for the mask that will make a keyframe and then move 10 frames you can do that while holding shift and pressing the page down button right here and then you can move the entire track you can go to your select tool click away and then individually uh, move all the points like so so you can do that jump 10 frames do that again move everything around and yeah I'll do that right now quickly alright so once you're entirely out of the shot what you can do is also change your mask to none so uh, we can actually see the entire shot and go in between these 10 frames so at the fifth frame and check if everything is alright so and uh, this seems alright maybe we want to move a few of these parts a little bit more and again go through the same uh, process using the shift and page down alright so everything seems fine once you are done doing this entire process what you want to do is actually go to your mask and click on the subtract right here so now we are keyed out of our shot and everything in the shot is actually static it doesn't move it isn't flexible and it won't uh, confuse our tracker so once you have done that click on your footage go to a layer and click on the pre-compose right here and move all the attributes into a new composition we'll rename this to our footage mask out and click OK and now what I want to do is go to the tracker you can go to window tracker and track camera click on that and that will yeah analyze in the background you can go into the advanced tab and just check detailed analysis and yeah now we should wait alright and now you can see all these buttons all these track points on our shot which means that our track went successful if you go through it and they stick to that position so um, these are a few mistakes but that doesn't really matter we can go back here and click on one on a few of these uh, frames right here so what you can do is actually select multiple of them by just dragging around and now you have something like this what you want to do is right click create null and camera 
Okay, there we go. What we want to do now is go to our project manager and import our image that we want to sky replace it with. Okay, so here I have my image that I want to add to my sky. I'll go back to my composition and what I will do now, once your shot is tracked, we can actually go back into our composition, go to that footage, press M on the keyboard and just set that mask to none so we can actually see ourselves back and there we go. So the shot has been tracked, we don't need to worry about that mask anymore. Everything will just stay the same as long as you don't hit analyze anymore. Okay, so click on your footage, go to edit, duplicate it and delete the camera tracker for the new footage and put it on top right here. So what we want to do is actually move to a point uh, where we see the sky pretty well and go to, well actually maybe a little bit more like so. Okay, so what I will do with this footage is solo it, make sure that we see our sky like so and I'm going to uh, effect keying and extract. And what I want to do is actually remove everything below our sky, so we only want to see our sky. So I'm going to drag the black point here to the right until we only see our sky here. What you can do as well is also drag it in a little bit more and maybe drag this one out again and then you will get softness in here and what that will do is maybe you want to integrate your original sky with new sky maybe you want to blend them together and that's also a really cool thing because it's going to look more realistic it's going to look better depending on the shot you have if you have an entirely blue sky and you want to add clouds it's going to be a lot easier uh, than if you have a sky with already clouds in there but it's completely up to you, you can play it like this, um, yeah, just go with the flow. Let's say this is our sky, um, let's see what we can do as well. Here for the softness, it's set at 30, that's okay. And then we want to go to our project manager, click on our sky that we want to replace it with and drag it below that layer, so right below that layer. Okay, pretty cool. Um, I will go back to my footage here and maybe just uh, remove a little bit more here. This is pretty cool. Okay, so what I want to do now is actually click on my astronomy here and go to the track mat. If you don't see that, toggle the switches like so and change it to an alpha mat like so. So there we have it, our new sky. And of course, you can play with the softness if you really don't want these kind of things. Um, maybe enable it like so and there we have it this looks pretty good and we're going to insulate this for now now you'll see that our original clouds are integrated with the new sky I kinda like this kind of style if you don't want this you can just extract it completely it's completely up to you like so and of course you're going to play around with all these settings because you want it to integrate pretty well and I think this actually looks pretty good here um, you're always going to have a little bit of problems here with the threes. Uh, you can use like a matte choker. I'm not really a big fan of that because it always looks bad in my opinion. But as we see, we have some problems here. So what you can do is click over here maybe and uh, like mask around our actor. Maybe you want something like this. And now that will be solved, we can press F on the keyboard to feather this a little bit more, maybe something like 500. And now our sky is going to blend in a little bit better with our original shot as well. And what we want to do is actually press T on the keyboard for our new sky, so T for the astronomy here. And change it to maybe 90 so we have it integrated a little bit better into our shot. And also go to effects, color correction, curves and maybe play a little bit with the curves until our new sky actually integrates a little bit better with our original shot as well. You can go to effects, color correction, hue and saturation, maybe you want to desaturate it a little bit more or you want to change the color to um, be something entirely different, maybe you want like a purple sky. Um, let's go for blue right now. And I want it to look like this a little bit. So this is going to integrate pretty well. And now what you want to do is actually make this layer a 3D layer. So toggle the switches if you don't see that. Click to enable 3D. And click on your null here. Press P on the keyboard to reveal the position of your null. And go to edit, copy. And click on your astronomy, edit, paste. And now we have our sky in the exact same position as our trees. And of course that's not what we want. We want to press P on the keyboard for the astronomy here. Press P and change the um, position here for the Z to maybe a 100,000 or even a million, whatever. A sky should be really far away as it is in real life. And then we're going to press S on the keyboard and scale it all the way up again. 
uh, we can go and click on our selection tool and just make it bigger holding shift like so and let's go to the end here and position this nicely in the frame make it a little bit bigger like so and there we have it okay so we have our sky and now if we're going to look back it should be tracked well into our shot we can still play a little bit more with uh, the curves here make sure that you don't clip your curves you can also go to your project manager change this to 32 bits per channel so you have a little bit more color to work with and there we go okay so this looks really really cool and it's really nicely integrated into our shot we don't really see it at the trees and that's how you have to do it you always have to composite it and change the color a little bit better to fit your scene or you can do some grading to your scene on the other hand so what we want to do now is actually make it look like we are actually on a different kind of planet because we have this kind of sky we never have that in um, well on earth so what you can do is right click new and create a new solid layer for example and pick one of the colors that you see in the sky like so click OK drag it below your sky and actually toggle the switches and change the blending mode so click on darken for example and then hold shift and press plus on your keyboard and that's going to toggle all the modes here so multiply looks pretty good and hard light doesn't look bad either so maybe you want to change it to multiply press T on the keyboard and increase it the way I want it to be and maybe you want to go to our layer and solid settings and make it a little bit more purple like and there we go so now we're starting to have something that actually is looking like the reflection of our sky we can see our whites aren't really white anymore before and after so it really looks like we're on a different kind of planet here we can also go new adjustment layer and maybe go to a color correction hue and saturation lower the contrast for the entire scene a little bit or go to individual colors and change these colors like the greens I really want these to be very low I'm going to add a little bit of yellows here maybe I want to change these colors to something different here and then we can press T on the keyboard and just lower the opacity here for the effects so now uh, it's going to add a little bit more realistic lighting to our scene and then of course you can add a final adjustment put it on top and go for a new LED so um, I'll go to my effects and presets apply it color lid I'm going to apply this to my adjustment layer and I'm going to use one of our own lids that you can actually find on our website I will put a link to them in the description if you're feeling like getting a few lids you can get some really cool looks immediately like so this looks pretty cool press T on the keyboard maybe change it to 50 percent and now it's going to integrate your sky a little bit better together with your shot so this looks pretty pretty cool and of course you can also add like a stylized glow to fit everything together a little bit better as well so maybe change the glow intensity to 0.2 and increase the radius to 150 and maybe 0.05 so without a glow and with really subtle but it does help with the final result of your shot remember that if you're going to do anything here everything that's subtle just makes it look so much better if you're going to exaggerate an effect if you're really going to pop your sky and give give it its own individual color it's just going to look off so this is a lot better of course I really think that we achieved a pretty great effect using these techniques and I know I went a little bit further than what most people expect from an advanced sky removal tutorial um, because I started about grading and stuff like that but I think these things are so important to put together because if you're going to know how to do a sky replacement but you don't know how to composite it well together then you have another problem so this is an all-around tutorial I hope you enjoyed it this is basically it and if you like this tutorial please give it a like and also subscribe to the channel for more and then I'll see you in the next one goodbye